Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been quite a while, but yeah, I have been quite busy the past few weeks. And if you follow my Instagram, you'd know exactly what's been going on. Basically, I've been doing a lot of commission work and also creating new ideas or new designs for myself, for my clients as well. And if you guys noticed, we have just reached a thousand subscribers, actually a little bit above a thousand. And I am so, so, so happy. Thank you so much for subscribing, for liking, for commenting, for, you know, like for sharing even the videos. And I have a few things in mind and one of them is going to be happening right now. I understand fully that not all of my viewers are left-handed and I am left-handed. So I'm planning on uploading two videos every time, which is one for left-handed people and one for the right. So you can just look at the description box below and look for which which one is better for you or which one is suited for you. And let me know if you guys want me to do that for the other videos that I've uploaded before. So I can upload another batch of videos for right-handed people. And yeah, that's about it. So today we're going to be working on this pendant right here. And I've had a lot of questions about this pendant from the first time that I've uploaded um, a picture of it on the groups or in my Instagram or on my socials. And yeah, um, every time I make one, it's always different. And so feel free to be creative feel free to to do whatever you want with this um design but yeah we're going to be focusing more on the frame for this particular piece because really like once you have the frame down you can do whatever you want so if you guys want to know how i made this pendant then just keep watching <music> First of all, we are going to take 12 inches of 16 gauge half hard wire in round to create our frame. Next, we are going to take two different sizes of mandrels. In this case, I chose two bottles with 1 inch and 1.5 inches in diameter. Now take the two ends of your frame wire and cross them over each other. Then shape it around your smaller mandrel until you get a perfect round shape. Next, we're going to take a sharpie to mark both our mandrel and wire where we're going to fold the wires. Mine is about 0.75 inch in distance. Next, we're going to fold the wires outwards using a pair of pliers until it creates somewhat like a U shape. Now take your bigger mandrel and place it on top of the smaller circle we made earlier and form the wires around it. And when you're done, it should kind of look like a snowman. And now make sure that you adjust it so it looks more round. Um, you can use your fingers while doing it. Um, you'll, you'll be able to see like you can eyeball um, if it's correct or not. Now I'm taking my cutting board to help me with the symmetry of the piece. Place the frame on top of it and mark the midpoints from top and bottom of the frame. 
then open the top bit all the way up to form our bale. Next, we are going to fold the two points into a 180 degree angle. And carefully adjust the tips until we have somewhat a crescent moon shape. Take your chasing hammer and bench block and start flattening the whole frame. Make sure that you don't hammer the tips of the moon so much because we are going to file it later on. Now I'm taking my Dremel to file off the ends. Um, if you don't have a Dremel, you could always use a diamond file, but <laughs> I'm too lazy so I'm using this instead. Also when you're working with tools like this, make sure that you have the necessary safety gear. Remember, safety first. I am currently using a sanding tip for this. Um, I'm not sure about the grid, but it's not too rough. I'm basically filing the tips until it gets a little bit pointed. Then I'm going to use a steel brush tip to smoothen out the whole frame because when you hammer and file your piece, it mostly looks dull. By using this steel brush, you're actually buffing out the surface and create some shine. To create our bale, we are going to take 8 inches of 18 gauge half round wire in half hard. Fold about an inch on one end of the wire and start coiling around the top of the frame.
Bend the bottom of the bale forward slightly and bend the midpoint slowly until it's curved. Then bend the end backwards so that the ends of the coil touch each other. Split the ends of the wire and cut the tips so that they fit into the middle of the frame. Next, coil around the bottom of the bale once and cut the ends. Now we're gonna start wrapping. Take 12 inches of 18 gauge square dead soft wire, um, and this is going to be our first wrapping wire. I'm also using a centimeter of rainbow moonstone square cabochon for this piece. Using a round nose plier, bend the midpoint of the wire until you have a loop. So we're going to take another pair of pliers and open the, the loop so it's kind of like a U shape. Next, we're going to thread the wire through the bale. And we are also going to crimp the wires slightly forward so that the back will be leveled with the frame and the stone can sit flat on it. Next, we're going to coil around the bottom of the frame once. And then we're going to create somewhat like a V-shape to frame the stone. Next, we're going to cut 12 inches of 20 gauge dead soft square wire to use as another wrapping wire. Bend the midpoint and create a V-shape and then just set it aside for now. 
Wrap the remaining wire around the stone to create like a diamond shape on the top. Crisscross the ends on the front and back of the frame. Next, we are going to push the second wire into the middle of the frame, uh, the tip facing downwards. Then fold the wire downwards until we create another V shape going outwards. Next, we're going to fold the top wire forward and around the back of the frame to create a big loop. Of course, we're going to do it on both sides.
Next, we're going to take the other uh, wrapping wire and we're going to wrap it um, towards the back and then to the front. It's hard to explain what exactly I'm doing, but I think you guys can see exactly <laughs> what it is. And also at this point, um, it's anything goes. Uh, you can do whatever you want with the design. Like I said, it's up to your creativity at the end of the day. And um, so I don't think I'll be talking much um, at this portion because it's mostly like free forming and like I said it's hard to explain <laughs> what exactly I'm I'm doing So now I am taking my round nose pliers and I'm going to make a curly Q, um, a big curly Q just to end this wire. And of course I'm going to do it on the other side. the ends of the other wrapping wire just to make sure that they are the same length so it's easier for me to bend them around and shape them but basically what I did was I um, as you probably have seen earlier was I, I uh, wrapped this wire on the back and then again to the front and then I'm gonna end this by crimping it on the top of the frame backwards I, I hope it makes sense but <laughs> but I think you guys can see and and you mean you can always just rewind um, the the video but here's a close-up of what exactly I'm doing just so you guys can see now I'm just making a few adjustments um, at the back of the piece just to make sure that they are aligned perfectly and this is how it should look like um, so far and now we're going to take another square wire this is 20 gauge dead soft and like earlier we are taking 12 inches and using my round nose pliers I'm gonna make a loop uh, kind of like an open loop because we're gonna be threading it through the bail
and then we're gonna go around the same area where we created that big loop but this time it's gonna go all the way down so we can create kind of like a different shape slightly lower and now I'm gonna wrap it to the back and this will go all the way to the front again Again, of course, we're going to do it on the other side, moving the wire to the back of the frame and then wrapping it to the front, going downwards and then twirling it around. Sorry, it's out of um, frame, <laughs> but yeah. And then we're going to try to bend it forward until it looks kind of like this. Like I said earlier, it's really up to you at this point what you want to do with it, but this is what I've come up with and um, it's cool <laughs> and now as you can see what I did with the ends was I bent it um, on the, the X and then I'm threading it through to the back and I'm gonna do the same thing with the other side so you guys can see exactly what I was doing. So bend and then pull it up slightly and then thread it through. And then we're going to crimp it to the frame. Next, what I'm doing now is I'm going to crimp the sides of this wire just so that we will stylize it slightly and it doesn't look so straight. I'm kind of creating like a tent shape on the side of the, the stone as you can see.
Now we're off to our last piece of wire. Now this is a 22 gauge round and this is half hard. Um, we're gonna thread this through the top of the stone and then like we did earlier, we're gonna take the V shape and crimp it upwards, okay? And then we're going to turn the um, the ends of the wire to, to the top and towards the front. Now, this is kind of hard to explain what exactly I'm doing, but I'm mainly like wrapping this around the top and to the back as well. And this is just creating some accents um, on the piece because most of the wire that I've been I've been using earlier were all thick, and this is the thinnest one that I'm I'm using. now we're going to be doing it on the other side as well So now this is how it looks like and I'm doing another twirl around the top of the frame and this is going to be the last thing I'm going to be doing for this uh, before I um, crimp it on the frame itself. So now I'm about to end this by crimping it on the frame and just make sure that everything is secure and not moving when you're done. And of course we're doing it on the other side as well. And this is it guys, we are done with the pendant. And I actually did a few adjustments off camera because I can't really see it. When I'm filming, my hands are quite far from my eyes, so I can't really see. But this is what we got. I know that you probably think that the back is a little um, messy, but trust me, it's not. Because once you oxidize this and like polish and things like that, it's not gonna show, it's actually gonna have like a really nice pattern on the back. Right now you can't really see it because it's all one color or it's all in one color. But yeah, whenever I make something like this or I mean this this type of pendant, it's always different. You know, you don't have to do the, the exact same thing uh, because at the end of the day, it's all about your creativity. So if you guys like this tutorial, please do subscribe and like and share this video. And please do follow my Facebook and Instagram, the links are down below. And I also have a Patreon account, so if you guys want to support this channel or just me as an artist, you can do that through Patreon. And if you guys want to purchase any of my pieces, they're all for sale, so you guys can send me a DM over Instagram or 
Facebook. So that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys learned something today, at least, you know, a thing or two. And I can't wait to see what you guys do with this design. Alright guys, happy wrapping. Bye! Our featured artist for today is Rox Flo. And if you guys don't know him, he is an amazing artist from Slovenia. He specializes on heady designs and also some tree of life, like really flowy, organic looking um, stuff. And he also started going into electro plating. So I hope you guys can check out his Instagram account and his Facebook. He's available anytime. Just send him a message and, you know, even just say hi to him. He's really a nice person to talk to and a really talented artist. So I hope you guys can have a look at his page. His links are down below at the description box. And yeah, that's it.